This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morrison. This week, we are celebrating a ton of accomplishments. From the women's distance medley relay team finishing second in the country at NCAAs, to the men's lacrosse team upending the top-ranked team in the nation, to a pair of Bobcats winning NASCAC Player of the Week honors. We've got it all for you. And more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. The Bates women's track and field team finished 13th in the nation at the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships. In one of the great performances in recent Bates track and field history, the women's distance medley relay team of sophomore Vanessa Paolella, sophomore Amanda Kaufman, first-year Elise Lambert, and senior captain Aiden Eikhoff set a program record with a time of 11 minutes, 43.51 seconds. Good for second in the nation. It's the best finish at NCAAs by a Bates relay team, women or men, ever. Eikhoff followed that up the next day by breaking her own team record and finishing third in the 800-meter run, the fifth All-America honor of her career. Eikhoff is our female Bobcat of the Week, and we talked to her and the entire DMR team about the record-breaking weekend. Vanessa, let's start with you. You had the opening leg of the DMR there at Boston. You ran with the team at Tufts. Uh, that was your first time kind of with the A-team. How did you see things go from Tufts to national kind of in terms of the development of the team in a short period of time? So the DMR team at Tufts was pretty similar to the DMR team at Nationals, like culture-wise, but surprisingly it wasn't a whole lot different. It was just the atmosphere that changed. Uh, with Tufts, we just knew we wanted to try to get a little bit of a faster time than what we previously had. There wasn't so much placement pressure. However, like at Nationals, you knew like this was this was the end game, and that really put a whole different twist on things. So leading off the race, what's the strategy on your part? Oh yeah, so leading off the race is just trying to get the baton to Amanda, the 400 leg, in a good position. And unfortunately, I got stuck in the back for much of the race, uh, four out of six of the laps about, just because everyone went out really fast. Um, thankfully, I guess like I was able to keep a pretty consistent pace, and I ended up handing off an eighth place. So handing off an eighth, so Amanda, you took over. What's going through your mind, uh, seeing you're an eighth at that point? Yeah, so um, I just kept watching Vanessa go around and around, and then she started making um, up ground, and then before I knew it, she was about 10 meters away from me. Um, <laughs> and I definitely might have had a small like deer-in-the-headlight moment. Um, our handoff probably wasn't the greatest, but um, we ended up handing off like way out in lane six, but um, it actually worked out really well because I was able to just kind of go around the mess of the handoffs um, and just um, settle in, which I guess I didn't exactly settle in exactly right away. I opened up in a pretty fast 200, so um, definitely learned from that. Um, I think it was more, I was like concerned that our handoff wasn't that great. I was like, oh my God, we're at nationals. I need to like just leave it all out there. So um, I think I could have run a little bit smarter, but um, I'm pretty glad I was able to, um, I found a Bowdoin girl and I just kind of was like, just stick with her and um, get a clean handoff into Elise, um, which we executed pretty well, I think. So Amanda, at the end of the 400, coming to Elise for the 800, what was going through your mind as you see Amanda approaching there? Because the 400, she's probably going pretty quickly for that handoff. Right? Yeah, um, just wanted to get the baton and not run into anyone, <laughs> kind of just find my own space and um, make up some ground um, on the next group of teams. So the DMR starts with kind of distance, come two more sprint type things, and now for you, the longest leg, the, the anchor leg, distance again. What's, I mean, what's your approach there? Because obviously you're able to chase some teams down. Yeah, so I really, I had previously gone out a little bit fast at Tufts and finished in a way that I wasn't super happy with. I just didn't have a lot left in the tank and it felt like I was just kind of struggling to the finish. So I knew that um, in in Boston at Reggie that I would have to go out a little bit more, more relaxed, especially if I wanted anything left at the end. And for me, kind of similar to the other legs, it's all just a blur and then it's your turn. Like it really everything moves so quickly there's 12 people on the track plus you know between <laughs> there's about like 36 other people waiting to to do their legs so it's really really hectic a great atmosphere um but when i got the baton i just wanted to stay relaxed and there was a coast guard girl in front of me who is such a strong runner but she had also just run a 5k about an hour before so i was hoping 
that I could stay with her for a bit and then possibly pass her at the end with sort of my energy left in the tank. So um, it ended up not quite working out that way. The race, I think, slowed down a little bit because no one wanted to lead. Um, and that's fairly common in the longer legs is that they just want someone else to take it out. Um, so I found myself in that position a couple of laps in and I was pretty confused as to what was what was going on and and how I got to that point but again like I knew that I had to stay relaxed because everyone was going I knew everyone's strategy was going to be what I would do in that situation which is to stick with the leader as much as you can and then the last lap try to beat them so I really did not want that to happen especially as I had just gambled by going out in front um, so I made sure to keep it a fairly steady pace so that I had stuff for the next couple laps. That's interesting. So you find yourself in first place, but it's not elation. It's like, uh, I'm a little worried about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was very worried. I was very yeah. worried. I at one point saw Jay along the side of the track and tried to make pretty heavy eye contact <laughs> with her of like, what do I do? What was my split? I have no idea what I'm doing here. And well, I've definitely, I'm not like. I'm not against leading races or anything like that. It was just a very new experience, especially up against these very, very strong teams. Um, so I just tried to kind of buckle in for the ride. And then when the Brandeis girl pulled ahead, I sort of saw that coming. She's very, very strong. Um, and I tried to stick with her for a couple strides and then she just blew by me and took the win. But it was a really cool experience nonetheless. So when she goes by you like that, you know, at that point, like, okay, I have to make sure I get second, hold off anyone behind me. Right? Yes, yes, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, <laughs> where are the other people? And I yeah. actually tried to look up at the TV screen uh -huh. to see how far ahead or far behind they were. And while they looked kind of far behind, maybe like five, ten meters, the finishes weren't actually like a large gap. So mm. I'm glad that I didn't think that I just had it in the bag and jogged to the finish I really did try and there's some really funny photos of me with this like determined face and just my form all out of whack but we crossed the line and it was so so amazing to have these three girls just come tag up. I was really trying to breathe but <laughs> it was so awesome to see the support and the, I saw them every lap screaming at me just supporting me through every stride so it was really cool well, yeah Vanessa let's talk about after you're done with your leg you get to watch all three of them so what was that experience like <laughs> oh my god it's surreal because I know for me like all right that was just the finish of my season but I'm still seeing like what I just went through in a different way with these three of my teammates and it's it's crazy because for me, I saw Amanda. Actually, I didn't even really see Amanda that much. I, I saw her finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I saw her finish and hand it off to Elise, and I saw Elise doing really well, running really well. And then it just suddenly it seemed like Aiden was in fifth, and then, oh, my God, hell, she's in first. <laughs> and that was – it was it's crazy to be able to see the whole progression of the race. It's a, a little hard knowing, like, I can't do anything, but it's also really validating to know, like, my part's done. <laughs> Amanda, I'm curious, after not running the DMR at Tufts, what was it like to get back into it here at Nationals on the biggest stage? Yeah, so it definitely was awesome that I had that one DMR experience at um, BU because it was a similar, really big stage, lots of really, really awesome competition. Um, and actually at Tufts, I was able to run a 4x4, so I had a 400 from last week kind of like under my belt, so I knew I still had my fitness up. Um, but you can never be prepared for nationals, I think, especially being um, my first nationals trip. Um, it definitely was a very overwhelming but incredible, absolutely incredible experience. Um, so, yeah, like I said, Vanessa kind of peeled me up off the ground <laughs> and was like, we got girls out there, like, we need to cheer them on. And I think the first few laps I kind of was just able to clap and, like, show my support. But once I got my breath again, I definitely wanted to make sure they knew we were right there with them. Elise, what are your thoughts on, you know, for being a first year and being a part of the fastest DMR team in Bates history? Um, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, um, I, I mean, I articulated a lot of reasons why I chose this school in yeah. the last Bobcast, and um, I see a lot of, you know, like the reasons why I came here, just like really coming to life. And like, I really enjoy this team and being on this team. Um, and it's so much more than I could have ever hoped for or expected. 
um, being a part of this and to be able to go to nationals like my first indoor season and to do so well it was just such like an amazing opportunity I'm so thankful for and then Aiden you had a lot more on your plate than just the DMR <laughs> this uh, this nationals how did you go approaching the entire weekend um, I did not know what to do. I knew that I knew that I would have to really focus on recovery and I knew that I would have to focus on stretching and cooling down and warming up adequately or else I was really not doing a disservice to me and my teammates. So after the 800, I jogged around for a bit and had a recovery drink and then sort of for the DMR, I took the warm up at my own pace versus what everyone else did as they had waited quite a long time we raced at probably close to nine at that point um so going then from the dmr to the 800 the next day i knew that i was in the final i knew that i was guaranteed all american if i started and finished the race <laughs> so i i just did what i could um friday night had a big meal full of protein and carbs and then the next day just made sure to to eat stretch heat and kind of repeat that process. So it was really so kind of strategic, but um, also just kind of winging it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the, yeah, the next day, obviously, a great performance by Aiden in the 800. What was it like watching her the following day? Oh, my God, it's terrifying. But she <laughs> no, she pulls it out. It's so amazing just because we saw her preparing beforehand. We knew, like, she was sore from the day before and after two fantastic performances. Um, but... Of course, she did exactly what she always does. She started out smart. She moved up, and she uh, I think she had a fantastic finish. We were all really proud. And Vanessa, I think this is your first time on the Bobcast. I wanted to ask you, you're a sophomore now, but how did you decide you know, Bates was the place for you? Oh, yeah. So um, I really like Jay, and I really – actually, I didn't even meet anyone from the team, but I just really liked what I was seeing from uh, – just like the team culture from – the articles that Art was sending me and I really love the friendly atmosphere at Bates and it's honestly like I got so lucky it's everything I had hoped for and more. Terrific Amanda obviously we're now moving into outdoor season the team's still working really hard what's uh what were your thoughts on outdoor season coming up? Yeah so I would love to um maybe get a really awesome 4x4 together I think we have a really um good pretend or a high potential for a really talented team um, if not this year in the coming years we're a younger team but a talented team in that sense um, and then I think personally I'm definitely excited to get to 100 hurdles and 400 hurdles um, I'd love to just like keep running fast keep running sub 15 and see where that takes me at least kind of similar question for you outdoor season coming up what are your thoughts I'm really excited to switch up my events <laughs> I'm getting kind of tired of running 800s every weekend <laughs> so um, I'm excited to jump back into hurdling hopefully um, and maybe even do a little bit of experimenting with multi oh nice yeah because we got multi-athlete here are you thinking decathlon also um Potentially. We'll yeah. see. I think I'm at the point in my track career where I kind of need to decide what I want to focus on. Um, as much as I would love to do it all, I know <laughs> my body definitely won't be able to withstand that. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how the season starts. Um, yeah, just see what happens. Awesome. Uh, Aiden, we'll end with you. Um, this is outdoor season coming up for the, these three, but for you, it's your, your final season Last of track one. and field. What are your, what's going through your mind? Um, I still am not quite accepting that indoor is done I, it hasn't really gone through my mind yet and that I won't ever we do we still do some training on the indoor track because of the temperature outside but that that, that was my last race and it hasn't quite hit me yet so going into outdoor I know I just need to appreciate every time I can step on that track and every moment I have left with this team awesome Vanessa Paolella Amanda Kaufman Elise Lambert Aiden Eikhoff thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast appreciate it thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Senior Katie Barker finished ninth at the NCAA Championships in the 3,000-meter run, setting a personal record of 9 minutes, 56.76 seconds along the way. Meanwhile, sophomore John Rex made his NCAA Championships debut with a 19th place showing in the weight throw. The skiing teams also competed at the NCAA Championships last week. Both Alpine captain Griffin Mueller and Nordic captain Kalen Woods scored points for the Bobcats combining to finish 20th in the nation. The men's lacrosse team is 2-0 in NESCAC play and ranked 13th in the country after knocking off then-top-ranked Wesleyan on Saturday by a final score of 15-12. The Bobcats grabbed the lead in the first quarter and outscored the Cardinals 5-1 in the second quarter to take command of the game. 
Head coach Peter Lasagna was proud of his team's performance, especially on defense. I think our one-on-one -on -one matchups guys handled really well. I thought we had the right people assigned to the right people, and I thought those guys, uh, Rocco especially, you know, he's covering one of the very best attackmen in the country, number 20, who is key to what they do. And then Stephen Bull was out on four, who's also really, really important to them. Um, I thought we did a nice job on two. Uh, who's exceptional. I mean, they got they got a lot of players as they showed. Thank God the, the fourth quarter ended when it did. Um, but I just thought, yeah, we, we bought in, we executed our plan. And it really started with outstanding one-on-one -on -one defense. Well, yeah, this game reminded me a bit of two years ago right here where Wesley made the final score look closer than maybe it actually was, perhaps. I felt the same way. I felt like we were in control for most of it. I thought we answered really nicely in the third quarter after they, they got a couple quick ones. Um, but then, again, it's part of working with Young men aged 18 to 22 is don't ever get happy and complacent until it's actually zero, zero, zero. I thought both goalkeepers played really well, making some key saves. I agree, and and uh, I, I just I agree. I thought they both did well. Rob made a couple huge ones at the end, and, and Mitchell was just tremendous in the first half. Uh, he really helped keep us in it, quite honestly. Uh, what else about this game stood out to you? Uh, I thought that we re we really wanted to get our transition game going, our quick strike offense going, because they you know play the best zone defense in the country, and so our attitude was our best chance to beat it is before they actually have a chance to set it up. And I thought for the most part we did a really really nice job in those opportunities in, in early offense. What sort of identity is this team developing on defense? Because it seems like both games so far, Nescak action, they've done a really good job. Yeah, I just think, again, you've got some veteran leadership there um, at the close defense positions. I think Frankie Spitz gives us some versatility. We can put him up. We can put him down. Um, and our D middies, you know, Sean Paul Clark and Walker Cooney and Andrew Lohman and RJ Sarka and Jack Golden, those guys did. I mean, we're really deep at that position. And if you're deep at that position and we don't have to slide to those short stick defenders, it makes our defense really good. Most important game of the year is the next one, right? That's exactly what I said to those guys, and it sounds corny and cliched and coachy, but it's true. And Western New England is really, really, really good. They just gave Amherst all they can handle, and so it is indeed the most important game of the year. Against Wesleyan, junior captain Matt Lestava tallied a game-high five goals and dished out a game-high five assists. He earned NESCAC Player of the Week honors, and he is also our male Bobcat of the Week. Matt, let's talk about the game against Wesleyan. Top team in the country coming in. They've been kind of a, you know, a thorn in the side, a rival of the Bobcats for a number of years now. What was the team's mentality entering that game? Definitely to just do whatever it took. I don't think the game was kind of ever in question. We kind of all went into it knowing exactly that it was going to be like a fist fight, that they were going to come out. But uh, it was our home field, so we were, we were uh, feeling a little chippy. So. And then for you personally, you know, on the attack, I, I like how you distribute the ball from behind the net. How have you developed those skills in terms of the passing? Because five assists to go along with their five goals. Uh, well, I, I do I do enjoy getting my defenseman hung in front of the net, and my teammates do a good job of getting me the ball when it when they are hung in front of the net. And I also like it's it's not that threatening unless my teammates are cutting really hard in front of the net and stuff like that. So. Uh, they kind of made my job a lot easier. Just Malali's always there for me. Otis has been doing a good job cutting off ball and stuff like that. So uh, a couple of those goals were just absolute dunks, and it's a testament to that, I guess. For sure. Well, and Brendan Malali, that, that that's some great chemistry there, right? Going back to even last season, the behind the back goal to go on Sports Center and whatnot. How's that relationship developed with you being able to find him for a lot of uh, scores and, and vice versa as well? I mean, we we are very. Um, good together like when, on, when on in terms of like on the field and stuff like that because his game isn't necessarily like my game so I think we complement each other in that way because we are different but um, I kind of know what he's going to do and he kind of has an idea of what I'm going to do so that level of like predictability between ourselves is uh, really really what helps in terms of uh, connecting on, on the field. Otis Klingbeal, a guy who missed all of last season with an injury, played a little bit as a first year. He's a fellow junior with you um, in this class. What's that been like having him back on the field? Oh, it's great. I, I love it. So nice having him back for sure. Uh, I know sitting out a whole, whole season is probably a lot. He's gone through so much hard work with the rehab and Coach Seltzer and stuff like that. So it's so nice to see him on the field contributing, and I know he's loving it. <laughs> I know your first year here a couple years ago, you had you know Charlie Fay and Andrew Melvin on that attack. You got a lot of opportunities. Last year, I know you and Clark Jones scored a lot, but teams were starting to have more key on you. How have you seen teams adjust to you, and what adjustments have you had to make, respectively? Um, well, I mean, a couple teams started like pressing out a little bit more, like locking off and stuff like that. 
So we've kind of gone over that. We've adjusted with like our game plans. Like PL's talked about it. We've talked about it as a team offense, and we we're fully prepared now. Like if I am shut off, we're fully confident with five other people on the field to make something happen on offense. So. And obviously, it's a big deal to beat the top team in the country, at least in the rankings. But it seems like the men's lacrosse team, you guys, you've beaten those guys before. It's not, it's a big deal, but it's not like a massive deal, it seems like, right? Yeah, we try we try to act like we've been here before because yeah. we have. Right. Um, it's it's definitely not a big deal, especially when it's a short turnaround. We got a tough Western New England team coming in tomorrow, Tuesday. So um, definitely, you, you, you want to enjoy it, but at the same time, it's a long season. Right, and well, Western New England, you guys, well, I think, went to overtime with them last year. It was really close, right? Yeah, it ended up being an overtime goal by uh, Curtis. So, What do you remember about this team coming in? Uh, well, I know them very well, personally. Um, I'm, I'm a Western Mass kid myself, so their head coach was actually like my club coach okay. growing up, and like my best friend from home is a defenseman on the team, too. So um, I know a lot of the guys on that team, and uh, I know their coach knows me and stuff like that, and it was a close grudge match grudge match last year's but so uh we're excited to see how it plays out on Garcelon. certainly obviously you're on the attack but uh, as the defense has been really strong this year what's it like watching them go to work when you, when, when you can't cross that line oh it's super reassuring yeah. especially when like i make a mistake or something like that i turn the ball over and then they go down and then we get a tough stop rocco gets a ground ball or there's a save from mitch or strain and stuff like that it it, it we play off of each other a lot, so whenever the offense scores, defense is feeling good about themselves, and whenever defense gets gets a stop, offense gets some new life. So in that way, it's uh, it's great to see the defense locking it down down there. I was asking Brendan about this last week, but obviously, you know, two years ago when you were first year when you were first year here, the team went undefeated during the regular season NCAA quarterfinals. Last year, kind of like was maybe a reminder about how tough this conference is. What are your thoughts on what adjustments have been made going from last year into this season? Um, I think the little things is something that we've really kind of tried to pay attention to um, on and off the field for sure um, because yeah like you said in the NESCAC no game is a given um, so we try to take every single game every single practice every single rep at like and try to do it to the best of our ability because um, we know at the end of the day like the margin of error in order to win and lose games in our league um, is so small that we can't necessarily afford to take a practice off and stuff like that. So uh, we, it was kind of a tough way to learn the lesson of last year, um, but I think it's, it's helped the maturity of our team. Great. Last question. Any other thoughts on the Wesleyan game you wanted to share that we haven't talked about yet? Big showing out from the fan section. Uh, I know they're allowed. It helps that the weather is good. Uh, I definitely love it, but family, friends, definitely out there um, contributing, and uh, we love to see it. For sure. All right, Matt Lestava, Mail Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. The women's lacrosse team is ranked 21st in the country despite a pair of tough road losses last week to Babson and Wesleyan. The Bobcats bounced back Monday in their home opener, a 15-3 win over Plymouth State. Bates is now 4-2 and on the season. We caught up with head coach Brett Allen after the game. Well, coach, non-conference win here over Plymouth State. What did you see out of your team after you know a tough week this past week, bouncing back to have a big win uh, this evening? We got off to a good start. We did a better job on draw controls tonight, uh, which made a big difference certainly early in the game, not putting our defense under a lot of pressure. Um, and I thought we just kind of stayed within ourselves. We didn't let you know the emotions of a game kind of overcome us, <laughs> which we struggled with last week early. Well, draw controls, what's the key to winning those? Because it seems like it's, uh, you know, a ball goes over the air and it's kind of a free-for-all. <laughs> yes, it does seem like that. Uh, you know, I think there's a couple of things. It's your ability to box out and get a good first step when you're playing on the circle. And then uh, the two players who are taking the draw, a lot of it's just about who reacts really well on the whistle. And if you can kind of get the plastic edge of your stick underneath the ball before the opponent can you can direct it a little bit better um, and we were doing a better job of that tonight both on the circle and at the center position so what are some points of emphasis this upcoming week in practice preparing for trinity this week so we try and take it day by day i mean kind of my mantra to the team has been every week is a new season and i think when you play in a really tough league and have good non-conference opponents there's a lot of truth to that um you know last week certainly was a rough week and you know i think the biggest learning lesson from it is that you just got to move on and move forward regardless of how the outcome goes um you know certainly last saturday we were coming off the big win against middlebury this saturday we were coming off kind of a deflating loss against wesleyan um but you just got to keep plugging and you got to show up and you got to put in the time and the effort and just keep keep going.
The softball team traveled to Florida to open its season, coming back with a record of 3-9. and nine. Seven of the nine losses against the stiff competition were by three runs or fewer. And junior Kirsten Palatier impressed in the circle, tossing her third career no-hitter in a 4-0 Bates win over Alverno. Through nine appearances, seven starts, Pelletier's ERA sits at 1.77. On offense, senior Andrea Russo made history. In her final at-bat of the trip, she tallied the 128th hit of her career, breaking the program record previously held by Stacia Sanic. So, Dre Russo, all-time career hits leader now in the Bates softball program history. Um, I, I understand, like, you know, it's not something that you were thinking about necessarily, but how cool is it now knowing that this is a record you have? Uh, I think it really shows how much the program's developed over the past couple of years and looking how our game schedule has increased, allowing for players like me as well as everyone else on the team to have more opportunities to do so. Uh, it does mean a lot to me because it – does show how hard we as a team uh, work and how the all that hard work does pay off. Opening week trip to Florida, there's a lot of newcomers on this team. So obviously it's, it's nerve-wracking playing out there as a college student. What adjustments do you think the team's going to be making kind of going forward? Uh, I think definitely the, time, the kinds of pitching that we're seeing are different for a lot of the newcomers. Just in general, the level of play does increase from high school to college. And... It's awesome that they were finally able to get a taste of what that is. And then also just uh, getting the experience of us playing together as a team in those close situations uh, and those uh, times where it may be a walk-off and the game ends kind of deal and all of us needing to come together and really, really shine through it in those times. Yeah, because you still have NESCAC play coming up. So yeah. really your record in Florida, I don't want to say it's irrelevant, but it's not something that necessarily you can be too concerned about going forward, right? Yeah, so with Florida, a lot of as uh, Coach Barnes was mentioning is – us playing around with the lineup, seeing who we have on our team and what everyone has to offer. And, for example, uh, Janelle, she came in here, uh, catcher, corners kind of gal, and here she was starting at second base. And mm. I never would have guessed it, but that just kind of shows how her as well as all the other freshmen and everyone else on the team is very athletic and very multifaceted and can be put everywhere. And that is an awesome asset for us as a team and especially a young team knowing that no one is no one is specialized and that does kind of really speak to how talented of a team we are this year for sure I mean I saw you were moving up and down the lineup kind of getting used to different spots in the order right yeah so it was personally a tough week for me um as well as for other girls, especially for some of the freshmen who are adjusting from the uh, from high school travel ball play to now and just really getting thrown into these starting positions. Um, but yeah, no, other than that, like I, it was what Coach Danica said to me after one of the games where it just really clicked that we are a deep team. And not one person has to be relied upon in order for us to succeed. And just kind of everyone can be put and changed. And there's mul there's multiple pieces to the puzzle that will end up with a gang finished. And we're a big team. On, we're a team that's big on metaphor. So with that, like, puzzle metaphor, like, you can fit the multiple pieces together. But in the end, it comes out as a regular picture or whatnot. And that picture is a win. So we're still waiting for that one game where everything just goes our way. And once it does, it'll be great. So just waiting for that to happen. It's cool to see Kirsten Pelletier throw another no-hitter, right? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. And it's just good to see her succeed as well as everyone else succeed too because – uh, with a no-hitter, she she knows she has to rely on the defense and for us to hit, too, because in order to win, you got to score a run. Um, and, yeah, like, it, it's just knowing that I – in the circle, she really knows we're all there for her. And the way that she's able to pitch so confidently and pitch so hard knowing that we got her back is awesome. Looking forward to having some home games coming up later this month here against UNE. Uh, hopefully the snow goes away. Yeah. <laughs> there's that. The there's the first thing. So hopefully yeah. there's no snow. Dries yeah. out a little bit. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll get like the hot hands going. You know, like put those in our back pockets. But yeah, I'm excited. It's it'll be fun playing, uh, playing up here. Yes, the 90 degree weather is nice, but 
um, just getting some games in that that'll be good and seeing how much we've improved since this Florida trip will be awesome. Awesome. Dre Russo, thanks so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. The Bates baseball team has won three in a row after a weekend that saw the Bobcats defeat Salem State 11 to nothing and Nichols College 5 to 4 on a walk off sacrifice fly from sophomore Noah Laughlin. Junior captain and 2018 first team all NASCAC catcher Jack Arend went four for four against Salem State. He is hitting 550 on the young season and has hit safely in every game he's played in this year for the Bobcats. Meanwhile, junior Nolan Collins earned NASCAC Pitcher of the Week honors after he struck out six batters over six scoreless innings, earning the win on the mound. Aaron and Collins joined the Bobcast to chat about the season so far. Got Jack Aaron and NESCAC Pitcher of the Week, Nolan Collins, with us here on the Bobcast. And first of all, we'll start with you, Jack. I mean, you're you're the catcher. You're one of the captains. You caught Nolan the other day against Salem State. What was clicking for him out there on the mound from your point of view? Uh, really, we were just trying to beat guys with uh, his fastball. Um, at the beginning of the game, we kind of tried to spin a little too much. We couldn't get a grip on the ball because of, at Northboro, there was there's no dirt or anything. Oh, it's yeah. it's just a turf that you have to kind of rub the balls up on. But we were just trying to get a feel for the for fastball, and we went back in the dugout and like the second inning, coach was like, "These dudes can't catch up," and we were like, "All right, let's do it." And it's kind of funny, like Nolan and I played over the summer together, and we've kind of gotten to the point where like I almost don't need to put a sign down like we are on the same page and I think he shook me off like once or twice so it's been fun yeah so Nolan how great is that to have a catcher like Jack to work with uh, that you're very familiar with and have uh, play a lot of innings with yeah it's awesome uh this summer we really got familiar with each other I mean we we had been familiar the, yeah. before but now like we really got into a groove we know what we want to throw and like you said like he'll be putting down signs but I already have it gripped in my hand and he's putting down the right sign so we kind of know what we want, and it works, and especially Saturday. I mean, they couldn't really touch a fastball. It made it easy for us. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's really nice being able to play with a catcher you're, that kind of calls the game so well. The other nice thing is to get 11 runs of support, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that pays off. It's a little different from the last couple of years, yeah. but it, it's a good change. So it's nice seeing the guys swing the bat. And Jack, you've had a hot start at the plate. What what are you seeing out there? What's working for you right now? Um, I'm really just trying to simplify everything, um, not trying to do too much at all. Um, I think I have a really good two strike approach right now. I just kind of widen my base out, use my hands, and like I said, not trying to do too much, just trying to react. I think honestly, last year, like I know it was first team on NESCAC, but I felt like I, offensively I had a a down year, and I didn't feel comfortable at the plate. But now I feel really comfortable and. Like this summer really helped playing in the Futures League, facing guys that play at Division One, Division Two, all levels, and guys that throw 90 consistently, and not being able to see that in here at this league, like it could be hard. Like going and playing summer ball and and seeing guys like if you look at my stats last summer, I was like down to like hitting 100 like mm-hmm. midsummer, and I was like, wow, I suck. Like this is not mm-hmm. good, but. Um, I, it really gave me put put the game in perspective for me and like let me kind of come in and make me made me feel way more comfortable this year and I, out of the gate I was like all right I'm swinging the bat I'm not walking every time I'm swinging the bat I'm getting on the base this time. So the, the futures league I mean Jack just said it challenging league what's it like from a pitching perspective? Uh, it's fun. There's a lot of good competition. Uh, the the hitters know what they're doing up there. It's a lot of fun seeing what you can do competing against guys that are playing. Division one baseball and seeing that you can compete with them and even dominate in some some points, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, just and like this the the summer ball vibe is amazing. It was so much fun. I loved it every moment. Wood bat leg or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. our uh, our team was fun. It was yeah. uh, you could have brought a camera around and yeah, it, it was, was like it would have been like the office. Like, yeah, it was, right, like we people would have people would have paid to watch yeah. our, our team. Like it was crazy. It was like pure we, comedy. Yeah, <laughs> like, we talk about it all the time. Like we're sit, we sit in our our dorm room. We're like wow, that was. This summer was nuts. Like yeah. it was, it was so it much was fun though. Fun you meet, you made, you just meet so many good dudes, and it's fun too. Like sitting in the locker room, like we have buddies on Northwestern now, like watching them play like Duke or something, yeah. and yeah. 
some kid, uh, he was a freshman going into Virginia. He started against Vandy the first game, led off. Like, Went four for four. Four for yeah. four. Like, we're like, dude, we know this kid. Like, this is, it's really cool. It's so, cool. Um, and like all the text messages in our group chats after, are, are, they're pretty funny. They're like, that's my son. Like, yeah, it's, no, it's cool. But no, it's awesome. Well, and nice, from a hitting perspective, going back to aluminum, I mean, what's the, what's the adjustment? I like hitting with wood, like, especially in the, the winter, because I, I feel like uh, growing up I always did it too like wood teaches you to hit you know if you miss a ball you're either breaking your bat or it doesn't feel good but with a, aluminum like it kind of it kind of gives you a little bit more margin for error um, but I, I feel like I'm confident either way like it, I just a, a bat to bat let me just go hit the ball <laughs> yeah for, from a pitching perspective with wood bats you can probably be more confident pitching inside. Is that fair? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I think honestly, though, like if you're missing barrels, you're missing barrels. Yeah. It doesn't matter what kind of bat you're using. So that's the kind of approach I take. But at the same time, over the summer, I saw some more like dinky hits. Like kind of, they they just got light. Like the balls just sort of found holes, mm. and that's different from college. College, like. If you get jammed, kind of the ball's gonna travel far, farther, obviously, because of the bat. Yeah. But I mean, if you're missing, if you're missing barrels, you you will be fine either way. That's kind of how I approach it. So. Awesome. And we mentioned that you know on Saturday against Salem State, you went to your fastball a lot. Mm -hmm. What are some other pitches that you're gonna be showing us off uh, this season? Uh, well, I think my biggest improvement between last year and this year is my is my breaking ball, mm -hmm. my my curveball, and my changeup. Uh, my slider was really good last year, but I didn't really have the curveball as a put-away pitch. It was more of an early count pitch. Same thing with the changeup. I didn't throw the changeup much at the beginning of the season. We started using it more towards the end and a lot over the summer. And uh, it's becoming one of my one of my best pitches right now. So I think that's the one that has developed the most. The changeup? Changeup. Yeah. Like, I mean, over the summer... Like I mean, you play every day. Like, yeah. like I, I remember Nolan throw. There'd be days you show up to the park. And you're like, all right, like I don't need to stretch. I don't need to do anything. Let's just play ball. Like, sure. mm -hmm. and but like all the pitchers would be on the on the outfield yeah. playing catch, and you just had a really good feel for your curveball, slider, changeup. But like I remember last year, like he said, like this curveball is more of a kind of get me over kind of pitch. But now it's tight, and you can we can rely on it to to get swing, swings and misses. Yeah, and a lot more confidence in the changeup now just from that repetition over the summer playing catch with it and now being comfortable throwing it off the mound. And then again, like you said, over the summer, just we would show up to the field and I would throw like 50 curve balls just playing catch and just, yeah. just to work on it because why not? Don't you know? tell Coach Martin. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as you have the right mechanics, yeah. right? Yeah. But I'm curious, you know, some pitchers, at least you look at the big leaguers, and you don't often see guys throwing sliders and curve balls in terms of that. Like they normally choose one or the other. But, uh, I mean, are you – you're happy with trying to do both? Yeah, I'm happy with both. Yeah. They're different pitches, definitely. Yeah. Um, my my slider looks more like a fastball. Yeah. It's harder, breaks later. And the curveball, I can kind of locate different places in the zone. The slider's more of a put-away pitch with two strikes. Yeah, You won't really see me throwing that besides when there's two strikes. But everything else kind of feels com more comfortable than that earlier in the count. So Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys opened up with some games in Florida, and um, I understand it was, it was a, you know, the trip, you had a nice place to stay and everything. It was like, yeah. kind of like a nice little you know, spring trip and everything. What were your thoughts on the Florida trip to start the year? Um, I mean, I, our record was 1-4 coming back, so on paper, it, if you look at our record only, it didn't look terrific. But um, I think it was a really good um, trip because it, it, it brought us – it taught us things that we need to – when we – came back we need to focus on yeah um i think it showed we can swing it a little bit this year mm -hmm. it's a little different coming back last year from la going 0 and 6 and hitting like 220 230 as a team and, and then right yeah, and yeah. now we're hitting 321 yeah. or whatever it is and well, i remember last year we came back and for two weeks we didn't pick up a bat we just bunted like <laughs> that was not fun i i, I mean but we had to do it but it, it was yeah. not fun now it's like all right let's swing it let's have some competition let's yeah. let's do some exit velos once a week and and kind of compete with each other and and we're all confident i we were talking about this earlier too like like the last couple of years were they were fun and we were good but this year i like i've never been around a group of guys that like we talk about like we have a shot at something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you welcome to transfer to the team, Christian Beal, who had a home run the other day. Yeah. Uh, tell us about him. 
he's a character. Uh, <laughs> Christian's awesome. He's a uh, high motor, high energy, um, annoying. Like I would <laughs> type of kid you don't want to have on the other team. Right, like yeah. you just you want, want him on your team. Yeah, you <laughs> he'll go chase down a fly ball. I mean, our outfield is awesome right now. We got we got Beal in center, Lindo in right. Um, Beats has been playing well. Uh, Sylvia's been playing well. Leo's been swinging it a little bit. Um, anyone, like, that's the biggest thing, too, that's different from last year is that we're just so deep this yeah, year. Yeah, whenever we bring someone off the bench to pitch hit, like Noah on Saturday. Yeah, Noah yeah. came over two big you know? hits. Yeah. yeah, like, we we just have guys to come off that, like, everyone's confident in they can get on base and get hits and, and produce for us, so... I think just having that depth and then... Even pitching-wise, too. Pitching like, wise, yeah, we got, like Cameron Carlson's a guy, and Ryan Moralejo haven't mm-hmm. pitched much the last two years. This year, they're, they're getting innings and throwing well, and it's just good to see like guys are growing, and we're just much more deep, and I think we're a lot better than we've been the last two years. And the freshman class is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I really believe that they, they might not seem like they have, like, opportunities right now but towards the end of the year they're gonna some dudes are gonna get opportunities like brian Gotti, mm-hmm. he's he's a big boy yeah. and he can yeah. swing he's gonna be in the middle of our lineup and he's gonna he's a huge he helps not only me he helps truly he helps beal andrew chi he gets on base he he's not very physically intimidating but <laughs> he, he gets the job done yeah. and um it just opens up opportunities for for the rest of the lineup and it just creates a game. Hitting's contagious. Everyone yeah. knows that. And if we can get one Beal at the top of our lineup, aggressive early, then Chi, then me, then <clears throat> then true, we yeah. we can yeah. do some damage this year. Sets the tone for the rest of the game having yeah. those guys at the beginning. And it's much nicer for pitchers to go out and oh yeah, and actually have like a one run, two run, three run lead, and yeah. know when we come back in to hit, like we can score right now. And yeah. you, you guys show that with the walk-off win against Nichols College. Yeah. Um, that's nice. To, the first walk-off win of the season, right? Yeah, that was fun. Um, <laughs> that was fun. I, I remember earlier in the game, G um, Giovanni Torres, he, he made an error, I think, at third. And he was kind of down on himself. Yeah. And I, It ended I, up costing us a run. It, yeah, it cost yeah. us a run. And I told him, I was like, hey, like, get it back. Like, yeah. you got another opportunity. Whatever that opportunity is, like, you got to stay focused. Like, don't let this get you down. And and he came up big in the last inning. He started off the, the inning with a single up the middle, and Lindo bunted him over, and there was a the ball. He, John ran into the pitcher, and he dropped the ball or whatever it was, and and um, G ended up at third, and then Noah came up, another big opportunity, and, and he pissed on a ball, and <laughs> he got a sack fly, and we won the game. So it's just like the little things that we got to take care of and, and know that, Baseball, like, you have more than one opportunity in a game. Yeah. Like, there's so many little things that you can control. And I try to just tell dudes, like, control what you can control. And if you can do that, like, the physical errors are going to happen. It's the mental errors we can't have. So if, if, G you make an error, oh, well, get the next one. Yeah. You got another opportunity. Yeah, it's a game of failure. So being able to bounce back and know that your players, your teammates are going to pick you up and have your back and – you're wor- it's you're working as a team to to, to it's a team win and, and we really show that we have Netscack play kind of around the corner at least uh, in my mind um you know it's almost like every game's a playoff game in the Netscack right there's twelve games <laughs> yeah what, what's that like as a pitcher going out there and you're like you, you might get three or four conference starts yeah so going the conference schedule is fun it's uh, <laughs> a lot all the games mean so much it's it, there's some pressure there's some there's some nerves but. Once you get out there, the adrenaline takes over, and honestly, it's just one out at a time. Just get get through their lineup and put your team in the best position to win. And honestly, it's it's very different from a, a normal regular season game like we played on on Saturday. It's yeah. the the atmosphere is completely different. Everyone is everyone. It ha, there's a special feeling, you know. The and yeah, <laughs> there's hatred. When we play, when we have Tufts and Trinity at the beginning of that season, I'm I'm very excited to go out yeah. there and pitch. And it's different preparation wise because you know, like you're only going to get one one shot at this team as a pitcher. You know, yeah. like batters, you have three games against them. I, I'm I'm just going out there for for nine innings to throw. So hopefully, I mean I. I I'm so excited for <laughs> for conference season. I think yeah. I think we're going to make some noise and it's going to be a lot of fun. How, how 
much of a, I don't want to say necessarily chip on your shoulder is there necessarily from how last season ended with the, that game against Amherst that was just like absurd extra innings. Like, I mean, is, does that, have you put that behind you? Or is that like serves as motivation going um, forward? I guess it's motivation. Yeah. Um, so during the games, my mom takes a bunch of pictures, yeah. which it keeps her quiet. And I know she's going <laughs> to listen, so she's going to get mad at me. But uh, no, she takes a bunch of pictures yeah. in, in the locker room. Um, it was like the 13th inning when the bunt was fielded and, and Jay Shapiro, bless his heart, he threw the ball into right field. and threw a nine minute Right, yeah, yeah, and he was laying on the ground, like his head on the ground, and, and I'm standing there, just my hands on my head, and we have that picture yeah. posted in the locker room. It's like the Bill Buckner picture. Yeah. It's like the legendary. <laughs> yeah. it's, it is we're crazy. Like, we're not it's... letting that happen no. again. Right. Like, yeah. No, obviously, like that, it was – the whole game was crazy. Like, I, I mean, I I don't know how pitchers do it because, like, I remember Nolan when we when we won Trinity last year mm-hmm. when he pitched the seven inning game when we came back and Abs got that big hit yeah. and we ended up winning and I Nolan, was in the I was in the he, dugout he, he hunched like, over the trash can. I thought I was gonna throw up. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. If I didn't have if I couldn't control what was going on, I'd freak out. Yeah. But like when I'm in the game, like. And you have some kind of control, and you can tell the pitchers, "All right, we got this." And the hitters, like, "Let's do this." Like, it, you you have some kind of confidence. I I don't know if I could do what you do. <laughs> it's tough. It's just you gotta trust your players. Yeah. You, you just gotta do your job and focus on your what you gotta do, and then trust that the hitters are are gonna come through. And that's why this year I think we're I think we're gonna be a lot better because yeah. I think our hitters are mm. gonna come through in most cases. So. Yeah. I think I'm very confident in our in our. I'm confident lineup. in our pitchers too. Yeah. I mean, every time Nolan steps on the mound, I expect to win. Yeah. And I know he thinks the same thing. That's not like me asking too highly of him. I just right. think he's that good that he can come in and shove every single day. And and now this year, like he doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. I think with our lineup, he can give up one or two runs. Obviously, that's gonna piss him off. But <laughs> and that would make me upset too. But I think that he can come in and not have a, a great game, and we can put it together offensively and scrap a win for him, which is awesome. All right, well, if you weren't hyped up for Nesquik play, you are now. This is Jack Aaron and Nolan Collins from the Bates baseball team. Thanks so much for joining us on Bobcast. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Thanks a lot. The Bates tennis teams both defeated Connecticut College on Saturday, with the women winning 8-1 to one and the men winning 9-love. And over the next two weekends, the teams will travel to Virginia and Maryland for some non-conference matches, with the women heading there this weekend and the men making the trip the following weekend. And next time on the Bates Bobcast, we'll recap how the lacrosse teams do against Trinity. The women host the Bantams this Saturday at noon. Plus, the baseball team has three non-conference games scheduled this week, and the women's swimming team is gearing up for nationals. All that and more next time on the Bates Bobcast. (laughs) 